again everyone i do hope that this is going to work now i have no idea what happened there but i was um just logged out and i couldn't come back in but these are the things that happen when you are um, using all these uh lovely technical bits then some things won't go right as i always say we just have to deal with it so i'm very sorry that the call was cut off and uh, since we were really getting into all the styles and trends it is a bit disappointing but having said that hey we get to hear so much from a style mentor so uh, let's go back in and try and get her back so for those of you who are joining now we were speaking to tisha kosla and she was telling us all about fashion style and trends so i'm going to rope her back in she is the style mentor at inifd and she was giving us all um wonderful tips so let's do that we'll work again Thank you guys for coming back. I know it's a bit inconvenient, but hey, Hi. such is life. Hello, Tisha. Sorry, I don't know what. No, happened, I know what happens. <laughs> I think the network wanted to go get stylish. And I thought, you know what? I'm not trendy enough. But I'm glad we're back here. <laughs> I... It has taken away from the flow of things, but I think uh, uh, you know we can just put the, um, the the style back onto the conversation. So let's just talk about what we were saying, but let's yes. quickly recap for our viewers who just joined us. Yes. Since we're talking about um, style, fashion, and trends, very quickly, is being fashionable the same as being trendy? Um, it can be actually, because, uh, like I said, they're like the word trend kind of branches out of fashion, right? So, um, fashion basically means something new and in the moment. Trends basically mean the same thing. So to be yeah. fashionable, you kind of have to uh, incorporate trends into your personal style. So say, for example, you're someone who only likes to wear black dresses when you go out because you feel comfortable in it. Great, you like black, but you could then add a pearl beret or a headband that's padded like this. You could uh, use a few trend-based accessories to sort of update your basic black dress. So I think mm. to be fashionable, yes, you have to understand trends and understand how you can use them to just better your own personal look. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Is also this is this a myth that fashion has to be uncomfortable, or do you feel that comfort should really reign? So I would say till up till like early 2000s, fashion was definitely all about being uncomfortable, wearing high heels, wearing fitted clothes, wearing tighter clothes, even if they don't fit you, because that was the image we had in our mind of what a glamorous woman is supposed to be like, you know, very slim, wearing bodycon fitted clothes and wearing heels. That was our idea of a glamorous woman. That has I'm so happy that has changed now. Today, fashion is no longer about being uncomfortable. You can wear sneakers with dresses. You can wear power suits, which are comfortable. And you can still look stylish in masculine silhouettes while uh, combining them with feminine colors. So I think fashion is no longer about how uncomfortable you can make yourself. But it is about how you can... Um, mm -hmm take different pieces from different time periods from different like sporty clothes and at leisure and you can mix it with you know like jewelry and bling you can do anything and get away with it as long as you're putting it together aesthetically as long as you're picking a theme either a color that's running similar to what you're doing or um, a certain um element that goes with your dress to your sneakers your accessories there has to be something that makes it look like it's actually put together rather than just throwing on things the first thing you wake up in the morning and then being like, oh, I'm comfortable, I'm stylish. It won't work like mm. that also. It's a thin balance, but I think fashion does not have to be uncomfortable anymore. Not today. Mm -hmm. And is it body type or uh, skin tone dependent? Um, yes, I would say it is, although I guess it's politically un incorrect to kind of say that, you know, body types don't matter, you should wear whatever you want to wear. That is true for the most part. But um, it's just, I always say even to my students when I'm having these sessions with them, there are certain things that will, you know, like, for example, someday you dress up and you just feel so amazing, you're getting compliments and it, there's like this X factor in a pep in your step because you know you've nailed your look. Why has that happened? Perhaps because the color is suiting you so well because it's 
for your skin tone or perhaps the silhouette of the outfit you're wearing is perfect for your body that it's accentuating what it should and it's hiding the flaws that's the x factor you get when you are um, dressing up exactly for your color type or for your body type having said that i'm not ever going to say that you know you can't wear this or you can't wear that that's just silly like i said today anything goes today masculine clothes go today fitted clothes go you can wear whatever you want but knowing your body type will kind of um, help you elevate your style for those extra special days like if you just want to get it right and you want to not take any chances that day if you know for example that you're um, a pear shaped body which i am which means i'm narrower on top and slightly broader towards my hips so then i know that i can wear uh deep necklines here and i can wear crop tops on top and i can wear a pencil skirt underneath and i know that that's just going to accentuate my body and it's going to make it look perfect but i can wear baggy clothes also i could wear very really fitted clothes but um perhaps that may not uh sit well for my particular body type and that way i would say the same thing for a lot of people who are say um round body types because uh, if you're heavy on uh, your uh, chest area and then you wear too many ruffles over here that will just make you look bigger than you probably are so then if you mm. show a little bit of a neckline it will accentuate your best feature so i think mm. these are small tricks that everyone can pick up about their particular body type and uh, use it to your advantage when you want to and rest of the time do whatever you want to <laughs> rest of the time just wear your confidence which yeah. is what uh, yeah. i think one of the one of the viewers just put saying i wear anything and everything as long as i'm wearing my confidence i think that's that suits works me. That's that works very works. well said john joshi we agree with that yep <laughs> um ishika here wanted to know about her body type which is apple so she was wondering what could be your suggestion so apple i was talking about earlier it's a round body type so it's also politically incorrect to now say your pear shape or your apple shape although it's like easy to remember but you know a pear shape would now be a triangle a uh, apple body type is a round body type so round body types tend to be slimmer at their legs and tend to be a little heavier towards their stomach or their chest so uh, for <laughs> apple body types it's really good if you're wearing skinny jeans because you probably have slimmer legs and on top sure. like i said don't wear ruffles don't wear too much embroidery around your stomach uh don't wear anything that's going to uh, make your uh, stomach area look bigger than it is so uh, yes. bold colors empire waistline deep necklines that is something that really works well for apple body types or round body We're types asked about uh, like in fact lot of uh, a request on the rectangular body type so what fruit is that So uh, rectangular is basically the traditional model body type you know so mm -hmm. it's like uh, you're not an hourglass but you have a straight body type so to accentuate basically what body types does is um, knowing what you uh, your body type is is supposed to uh, help you create shape in your body so for example yeah. if you have a straighter body type you probably want to wear tulip skirts so that kind of creates an illusion of a hip line or you could wear corsets on top because that looks great on a rectangular body type and for the mm -hmm. most part rectangular body types have it easy because look at the runway look at the models whatever they wear they look great rectangular body types can look good in anything so there you go all your rectangular body types first of all celebrate your body because yeah. you've got one of the perfect ones out there yeah uh, we also people also want to know um your styling tips on curating a perfect wardrobe what should yeah. really be in it so um i think the biggest tip for styling yourself if you really think about it you can wear a jeans or a pair of trousers a top or a dress and for most people that's it but um i think styling the element of extra style that you put like the extra effort you put comes from outer wear outerwear is the biggest method of styling your looks so you need to uh, sort of invest in different sort of coats jackets blazers trench coats if you if you live in some uh, if you live like in cold places like i am chandigarh is really cold right now so having uh, yeah <laughs> and uh, having lots of uh, coats 
is a, a, a great way of uh, styling uh, and creating an interesting wardrobe because a simple dress and you uh, put a little trench coat on it or you put a denim jacket on it or you put a leather jacket or you uh, take like ikat fabric coats anything you know sustainable options are also very very great right now and there's so many people doing great things you can just style yourself with outerwear accessories 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 headbands bags jewelry mm -hmm. earrings rings try anything these small elements will actually definitely upgrade a simple outfit that's just a trouser mm -hmm. or a, a smart top or a dress so i think and how want to curate from the same question how should one curate the miss india wardrobe when they go in for their training and grooming and they're there for 15 yeah. to 30 days what yeah. should be the basics that so, should always be covered based on uh, what i have seen by interacting with miss india contestants for almost 4 years now um i think there are two things they're doing during any pageant like a, uh, any of these contestants during their pageant what they're doing is two sorts of activities so one is based on your training so your sessions your grooming uh, the way your walking sessions it's like uh, that's your uh, core what you're doing during your training for that there is this universal model uh, uniform which is high heels skinny jeans and like maybe a crop top or a spaghetti strap top and you can see any model in the world when she's rehearsing they're wearing this because it's so comfortable it's easy and it tells the person the way the body is moving and if the walk is looking good or not and then that's the base on which you can wear anything you can wear any clothes and then you are on your runway so i think uh, a lot of girls should invest in a good pair of jeans that accentuates their legs in the best uh, possible way a good pair of uh, sturdy strong comfortable heels and have a uh, spaghetti tops for your um, training sessions uh, then apart from that what you have are your socializing events which i don't know if they're happening this year but usually socializing events are where you're meeting people you're meeting sponsors you're going and doing visits you're interacting with people so that's where of course you need to be a little more dressed up and i think the best way is um, have colorful dresses don't always wear black that's my biggest tip i give anyone like if you want to stand out in a crowd you cannot go out wearing black especially a ordinary black dress if you're wearing black make it like wow like it's the best black dress there if it's not the best black dress you can find i tell people to invest in lots of colors uh, uh, colors for your skin tone it's very easy to find out if you're like um, your skin tone based on your uh, nerves so like if you have greenish tone under your nerves you know you have a warm skin tone and if your nerves are bluish in color you have cool skin tone based on that it's very easy to find out what kind of color will suit you best so uh, i think <laughs> everyone's checking right quickly the good you said it so i am a warm skin tone person my nerves are very very green so a uh, warm colors suit me like reds and oranges and yellows those are my colors like i would not look as great in blue as i would in red or a magenta so that's the way to know what's working for your skin tone so i i would suggest getting dresses and cute crop tops crop tops are a must for um, i think miss india's uh, miss india contestants because you can pair a good crop top with skirts with shorts with trousers and you will look super glam because it uh, you can accentuate your waistline which they have like it's their perfect waistline right so why not accentuated why not wear ruffles wear um uh, sleeveless or uh, off shoulder crop tops i think crop tops are a big big must for uh, anyone who wants to pack for a miss india training session and uh, i think those are the things i would and of course your sporty clothes have some at leisure looks when you're traveling and when you're working out because those are a must so there's uh, this all of that you've said is fabulous for when you are in person but this year something amazing happened the pageant went virtual so everything is online yeah. so i was wondering does this change a bit when you're representing yourself in front of a phone camera and you have you know judges on the other side who are virtually yeah. talking to you how should one dress then because not always are they going to see the full you or yeah. there's always this much in like how we are talking right yeah. now you don't even know what i'm wearing under it's just that it's pretty much a blocked view yeah. so how would you so I think one of the best things about that is a, a lot of extra attention will be coming on to people's personalities and how they talk and how they 
speak and how they think and the words they use um they'll be more focused on the personality which i think is a great thing of course uh, when you're doing a, a, a interview or a one on one session like this good lighting is a must i think that's something uh the girls need to keep in mind that you don't want uneven lighting you don't want to be white washed from one side and too dark from the other mm-hmm. you need a neutral mm-hmm. background gray blacks whites work uh and you have to do makeup and hair because that's what is <laughs> visible and uh i think it's very important for girls to like learn good makeup and hair skills so that they can quickly get dressed without being dependent on someone and um uh, it's just a little bit of an effort but it shows that you tried and that you're there and you made an effort to be there and uh, the other person appreciates that always so i think that is an important thing to do for um one on one virtual one on ones in fact if you were just mentioned here say so can you give some tips on makeup as well or how to keep up with the trends there oh youtube i have learned all my makeup from youtube it is really easy to pick it up and uh, i think uh, the biggest step for makeup is always if you're doing very big bold eyes then you need to do neutral lip but if you're doing very thin eyeliner then you can do bright lips so uh, i think a lot of people do both and then that's just it's too overpowering and often times it doesn't look great so i think it's important to understand the balance of uh, when you're doing makeup if you're going for a big eye or if you're going for big lips choose one always choose one and that's the biggest the most important fashion tip that i think most girls tend to they know but they kind of forget so i think it's a good reminder also do you think it's good to have some kind of a personal thing that's that's yours for example i remember for from as long as um, i knew fashion neck yeah. pieces was my thing so i yeah. would always like pick a nice junky heavy neck pieces and that would that i would always be drawn towards them so now yeah. i've become the- neck piece woman so yeah. i'm all my family stuff at me i would still have my hair in a bun straight after a shower but the first thing i must wear is a neck piece as you know yeah. this part has been done so that's become that's my it. thing yeah but, i think that's one but, but that's not trend dependent so does that mean no, me not trend or does that just no, make no, my no, style that's absolutely your it could be trend dependent because if you really think about it necklaces are always in trend it's just what changes is what's coming in the market or what the designers are making and obviously in the moment when you're buying something you would buy something that's come off the runway or someone has created something that the designer made and then done a little twist on it so uh, it's great to have a signature style and uh, that's you that's inherently you like i said it's internal and something you would love and everyone should have that little thing that you know for example taylor swift for the longest time would only wear red lipstick and she was famous for her red lips so everyone yes. the, there are th- like kim kardashian is famous for wearing nude colors and it's leisure right now and um, mm-hmm. i think it's great to have that little thing that's inherently mm-hmm. you and it's your signature and uh, of course in that like you said if you love neck pieces and if you're currently buying neck pieces you'll obviously buy something that's coming from today's trend so you get updated into the trend and at the same time you're uh, using something you love which is neck pieces so for me it's headbands i'm always buying headbands I and get to that. <laughs> yeah i love headbands it's like something i just uh, i don't know i just feel like such a princess i think it's been in my mind since gossip girl because blair waldorf used to wear it back <laughs> all the time it came in then because i was a teenager watching it and it heavily influenced me mm-hmm. and back then headbands were like small skinny things now they're big so now my headband has updated according to the trend right now but the love for mm-hmm. headbands has not gone you know yes so, in a so that is something i think people should definitely have a little thing that's them and that they don't want to let go of because it is them it's, it's and would you it's encourage awesome. people to experiment it's because again looking at your headband it looks lovely on you but i don't think it's i i have that right now to carry chunky hairbands i feel that my my hair probably can't take it so and i love hairbands always have so even when you can't see it you would see a subtle one still there i've always been a hairband girl yeah. but i kind of very of trying the chunky one so if i was your client how yeah. would you like convince me to go that way and actually give it uh, an experiment so um i think with these headbands a lot of people wear them the wrong way the very first time they wear them and that just throws them off and they're like oh god no this is too much but the right way is the way i'm wearing it you have to place it at the highest point 
of your uh, head so that it kind of looks like this um i don't know if you remember in the tudor era women the queens had these big headgear they weren't crowns but they actually felt like headbands and they were made of fabric so this yeah. this when prada did this a few years ago and then this trend picked up like crazy and it's still going strong i was like oh my god this is like what the tudor queens were wearing so in my mind that's how i would sell it to someone like just imagine you're a princess with a crown on your head and you're like walking around and and it actually uh, grabs eyes because people are like oh that's a headband <laughs> and so um i think it's great to try it but then again i would never want to push someone into try something just because it's in the moment like it has to feel comfortable you have to feel like okay if i go out of the house wearing it then i have to not constantly touch it and be aware of it and be fidgety about mm. it then you have to be confident so once you have that confidence and that comes from conversation and talking to someone and understanding what they like and what they don't like and then recommending things to them based off of that so um yeah i think your personality definitely comes first and then any new trend that you want to try vivia wants to know how do you define boho style boho is actually a extension of the hippie style that came in the 1960s so that was like the period of flower power and you know woodstock the music the music festival that happened it was about flowy clothes it, it was about lots of prints so um that look but that was very very distinctive and is very 60s that changed became slightly softer uh through the 70s it became more softer and boho is about uh today festival fashion where people wear to music festivals and it's about um lots of lace it's about flowy dresses flowy skirts flowy gowns head pieces like flower crowns uh that is a boho look and of course lots of fringes wearing loose kimonos um and pairing that with uh, chunky boots sometimes because like i said uh, chunky boots and girly dresses are a big trend right now so boho is about soft fashion about uh, soft colors prints flowers and flowy fabrics there you go i hope that's answered for you and another question here um there is a lot of actually makeup interest but like tisha said i think youtube is your answer for that uh this is more wardrobe specific but uh tisha if you have any tips for ria she says uh any advice for girls with big broad eyes as well as big lips so you've got actually two things to highlight and it's always a confusion as to not to overdo it so my person because you asking me personally i would always say if you have big eyes highlight your beautiful big eyes because eyes speak so much more than what you can say from your mouth and i think highlighting uh, big eyes is uh, like i have tiny ones so i have like do stuff to make them look bigger than they are but naturally big eyes i think just accentuate that and wear like a light uh, nude or a nude pink lipstick and i think that would be a great look for someone with big eyes and big lips Mahima is asking a very interesting question. She's saying how does one style hair according to a face shape? How do you like make that a part of your style as well? Yeah. So for example, if someone has a really big forehead, you know, and uh that's fine. Like again, I'm not saying anything is wrong here, but uh if someone feels the forehead is too big, then for your hair style you could have bangs because bangs look best on people with a big forehead because it kind of covers a little bit of what you don't want to show and then they fall right above your eye eyebrows and uh, i think bangs are a great look for a face type that's got big um, forehead for someone who's got a really small face having your hair fall on either side kind of just elongates the look i have a small face so i often like to have my hair coming out from both sides and that just makes elongates my face so these are like small things you can um when you try a couple of things you can tell you can your naked eye can tell you that okay this is looking good for my uh, face structure and i think um, that's how you can uh, style hair for your um, face structure what about tight curls do you think they're still in cuz some people just can't get away from that yeah so like i said some people it's just inherently them like they only wear bodycon so i guess it's yeah. great for them but in general bodycon and high heels are kind of not the trendiest thing to wear right now because right now it's all about 
androgynous looks it's about trying different things it's not about looking the girly girl it's about being girly with a little bit of a masculine touch in your outfits it's called power dressing as well so um yeah i guess um body con is something i'm not totally in favor of but you know some people just have the body for it and it just looks fantastic on them so more power to them <laughs> kim kardashian being one of them i have no idea how she's always living in them but always. she does <laughs> Kathy wants to know. She says, "I've always been a tomboy. How do I even begin to groom myself on the the other side of styling?" So for me, I, I would think um, androgynous styling is the wrong step to begin with. But what's your take? You know, I agree. Uh, for someone who doesn't want to be the girly girl, the traditional girly girl, androgynous looks are a great way to uh, sort of uh, dive into. you know or to dip into uh, fashion for someone who's not into fashion so you can like i said try baggy pants but with your boots and so it's a little girly but it's also kind of tomboyish at the same time and also someone identifies as a tomboy right now is the time to be like this is the moment for tomboy fashion at leisure is doing so well and at leisure is basically tomboy clothes because it's all about okay. track pants and loose jackets i'm wearing totally luxury stuff nothing to do with body yeah, con exactly that's perfect for now so uh, i think there's so much to uh, pick up in the market with like baggy clothes or baggy sweatshirts and you can just instead of sticking to black black or brown just try more colors because there's so much available right now and i think that way you can definitely update your uh, tomboy look <laughs> San Crazy Queen wants to know uh would you advise people on coloring their hair as well and experiment with hair colors is that part of style Yes absolutely so i was blonde a few years ago because i was just so bored of my dark uh, black hair right now i have reddish brown hair i think um uh, i think it's the oldest trick in the book like you want to change your look completely go color your hair <laughs> which is why people uh, <laughs> turn to coloring their hair every time they've gone through something major in life and uh, i think it's a great way to actually look and feel like a different person and then based off of your hair you can try different trends and go into wearing different sort of clothes it's actually a, a great permanent change because it it'll stay for a while right and that kind of just pushes you into trying more new things and it helps you break your boundaries and uh, that can be a good thing sometimes it's very cathartic to be different and to not be stuck in your shell and hair color helps it certainly does so we spoke about um the cool skin tones and we spoke about warm skin tones we've got a question here asking about deep skin tone what would be the color that suits a deep so skin a tone so a deep skin tone uh, often falls towards warmer skin tones and deep skin tones especially in india we look great in oranges reds yellows um so if you see a color wheel there's like one side it's all warm colors and the other side is all cool colors and any color that falls on the warm side towards the yellows orange rust uh those are the colors that will look great for deep skin tones and then for uh, cooler skin tones blues greens baby pinks um those are the colors for aqua colors so basically deep colors have earth colors and uh cool skin tones have aqua and ocean colors mahima joshi wants to know if you are a bit uh, on the heavier side for your lower body what can you do to minimize the effect so uh to balance that because if you have a slightly heavier uh, bottom you can wear uh statement sleeves on top you can wear ruffles on top because that that means often you are most people tend to be heavier on one side of the body rather than the other so if your uh, wider hips are uh, already creating a curve for you and on top you're looking too slim you can wear ruffles you can wear statement sleeves and statement sleeves are a big trend again they're called victorian sleeves right now and so that will create an hour glass look for you because you uh, you're wearing bigger sleeves so you're accentuating your shoulders and then your hips are already accentuated so you create an hour glass for you and that way you balance out your body smile jeep wants to know she says i'm 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 wearing i'm wearing baggy jeans but i'm also wearing a loose t-shirt on top and when i look at it it just looks weird what am i doing wrong so uh, that's a little simple styling trick often times when you're wearing baggy jeans 
it's a good idea to wear a fitted top and vice versa. If you're wearing a loose top, then wear a fitted lower. Uh, that way, again, it's about balancing your body because if you have fitted all over, like we discussed bodycon, that's kind of out of fashion and loose all over, it's, yeah, it's at leisure. It's, uh, it's about comfort dressing, but um, you can have at leisure looks but you can have them slightly more fitted in one part of the body. So if you're wearing baggy jeans, I would say, and if it's not looking good to you personally, then you need to wear something more fitted on top and that way you can balance out your look. Mansi is asking, is monochrome dressing still in? Yes, very much, very much. And people love monochrome dressing. People love wearing same uh, color tones. They may be different shades of purple, but head to toe you're in purple and, by, and for any other color, it goes the same way. Mono, uh, monochromatic looks are, I think, amazing and they are not going to go out of trend for a long time. Right. So I think we people, you've got so many stunning questions. It's absolutely amazing. <laughs> Everyone wants to get trendy and we've got the mentor with us. Um, I'm going to very quickly ask about a uh, combination power. So, you know, when we go ahead and we buy a few pieces, Tisha, we, we tend to just focus on that, say, one dress. Do you think yeah. we should actually think about picking pieces that we can mix and match and make, like you were talking about sustainability, yeah. to actually make the most of your wardrobe choices? Yes. Uh, yeah. So that's a very important question you've asked me. And I think people need to, before shopping, at this point, we've reached a point where the entire industry has been questioned, right? And I think it was needed as well because consumers and their buying patterns needed to change. So today, when you buy something, you have to consciously think about how many times will you wear it? How often mm. can you combine it with different pieces that are already in your wardrobe? And um, I think more than anything, before shopping, people need to now create lists. Like we used to when you were kids, like you would have a list for your birthday. I want to buy this, 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 this. And then you would really get those things, you know. And I think that was a very uh, a good system. It was a sustainable system. Then you value those pieces more as well. Whereas today you're every day buying things and then nobody cares about it. And then you throw it away after wearing two or three times. So making lists, and it's so easy, have a list on your phone. And consciously decide this is what I want. This is what I want. This is what I want. And then when you go out, Con like consciously search for those particular pieces rather than just buying whatever comes in front of you because that's the impulsive shopping which we are kind of trying to discourage at this point so if you have a list in your like I wanted a pair of white trousers and they were not easy to find and it took me almost eight months but every time I would go out I would only search for that I had an agenda in my mind that this is what I want and so it kind of curbed what I'm buying it helped me uh, channelize my energies towards picking up only the things that I really, really want. So people should have a list. You should have your basics sorted, like your basic jeans and your basic dresses. That's, that is like core. That's your core wardrobe. After that, when it comes to trend-based pieces, I would say pick maybe four to five every six months. Don't go shopping for new trends every month. That's not sustainable either for your pocket or for our environment. You can just pick and choose a few things, six to seven trend-based items every six to seven months. And that way you're not over shopping. You're consciously thinking of what you're buying and, and you're picking things that you already know will go with what you already had, uh, what you already have in your wardrobe. So I think that's a very simple thing everyone can do just have a list and you will find what you really really want we have a very um cute question from Priyanshi. we have to take this Tisha. she says uh, i want some dressing tips to wear to a medical college under the apron simple yet stylish so yes your uh, tips for her please if you're wearing it under the apron i guess um you i mean if you're like work if you're studying and you're like there all the time then you just want to be comfortable i would say save fashion for afterwards like when you're away from all of that so that your everyday dressing like i said is your core wardrobe which does not need to change there's there was a reason why steve jobs would wear a black turtleneck every day he said it didn't it was um very efficient because he didn't have to think all the time about what he wants to wear it worked for him because he was constantly doing the same thing every day. So for someone who has a permanent job or something they're doing every day, it's good to have your basics sorted so that you're not consciously thinking about clothes. And then go all out in your free time. That's when you experiment. That's when you can try different things. 
uh, I think that's the mm. way to go. We've got some interesting questions for my ring as well. So people, I would love to tell you where it's from, but it's been so many years. And that's the one thing I was asking Atisha as well. I tend yeah. to repeat a lot of accessories. I'm a, I'm a total accessory girl. Yeah. But this was bought at an airport. I don't even remember which one, <laughs> but many years ago. But maybe Tisha can tell you if this, something like this can be bought anywhere around still. It's just got lots of crystals and it's like more... Oh, yeah, um, uh, that's the great thing about trends, right? Like things just keep coming back. So I'm sure uh, if you go out into the world, you can find something similar, not exactly the same, but yeah, I'm sure. But there you go. Don't lose hope, people. You will still find it. Just keep, like she said, write it in the list. Right, make write a list. List. statement and ring. You might just find that. Yeah, your uh, list should be like, I want a statement ring and then put it in your phone and then go hunting for one. <laughs> Pragati also is asking. She goes, "I've got. I, I, she's she's good with styling herself, but I think when it comes to hair, she's got just very straight, fine hair. So uh, something like maybe what you've done. So what have you done to your hair to give that kind of volume that goes really well? Could you so, share um, tips? On? I have. So for my hair, I have like a different um, things that I uh, I have actually collected a lot of hair tools over the past few years because I love curling my hair. I not, I have naturally straight hair, like straight wavy hair. So um, you can actually, I have done tutorials on how I did this hair. You can find it on my Instagram if you're really, really interested. But uh, there's a tool called Hot Tools. It's a bubble wand. Uh, you, I'm sure you can find it on Amazon. Uh, these bubble wands sort of create waves instead of creating tight curls. And I like waves more than tight curls at this point. So um, otherwise you can see my, um, I think there's an IGTV video or a reels on how I did this hair. <laughs> We've actually got a request from Rajat Singh. Can you please share some tips for guys as well? He's very um, oh, uh, keenly. So right that's now. my weakness because I'm so focused on like women's fashion and like how I dress myself and like talking to girls. Most of our students are girls. So, um, but I guess for boys, um, I would say right now, uh, at leisure looks are just as in for boys as they are for girls having stylish uh, baggy uh, denim jackets and uh, any kind of trench coat for men is very, very stylish right now, especially if you're in the no northern part of the country where you can actually wear coats right now. Uh, and uh, I would say boys should definitely experiment with outerwear. That's a tip that runs for girls as well as for boys because you can wear a regular jeans and a shirt, but then on top of that, the way you style an outerwear jacket uh, I think that does wonders. And would a change of eyebrow bring a change in the overall look we've been asked? Eyebrows change shape. everything. <laughs> <laughs> eyebrows are important now. Uh, but I think it's like people go really big and bold with eyebrows and you can have skinny eyebrows. I think that's a very personal choice. And um, just filling them in is an important thing. The shape and how big you want to go with it is your personal choice. But in general, just fill in the gaps where the hair is a little less and it kind of completes your makeup look. Without it now, uh, makeup just feels incomplete if you haven't brushed through your eyebrows or if you haven't filled in the little uh, spots that are very starkly white compared to the rest of your hair. Yeah, like Tisha said, I think it's more of a personal choice. Like I've yeah. seen... Um, so many really uh, sort of bigger, broader bra brows these yeah. days. That's like the trend, if you that's call it. Trend. Yeah, I am very scared to go that way because I'm very comfortable with keeping them thin, and that's yeah. how I've always. This has been me, so it's very hard for me to just go bushy all of a sudden. That yeah, I don't feel. Exactly. Which is very good for a sardani, by the way. But I just feel this has been me, so I I've stuck to it. So I suppose you will have this internal voice that will draw you towards certain things, and Absolutely. for some. We'll just stick to your personal style. Something so that's the you. Yeah. Of it. yeah. Some things we don't touch. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I would never. But anyway, I want to very quickly come to a few fun questions. You've answered some really serious styling questions. Now let's get to know you a bit better. Uh, people want to know what's your favorite color. Oh, so I, I tell people rainbow because how can I choose one? It's impossible to choose one. I love all the colors in the rainbow. So I love all the colors. But I think, there's a color. Sorry, go on. But uh, there's a color that I don't wear often, but it's like my entire room is that color and it's pink. <laughs> <laughs> so 
<laughs> I love pink in my interiors out. and in my decor, and I like to see pink everywhere. Like my hand luggage is pink and stuff like that. But I don't wear pink that often because I don't think I look that great in it. But I love to see it around me. Which is the the color for twenty twenty one in your uh, view? So it's uh, definitely going to be more of pastels and natural and nude colors, which are already mm -hmm. going on from twenty twenty. So if you see the trends for the last three years. Uh, two thousand eighteen was all about millennial pink, which was a baby pink color, which became all the rage. Two thousand nineteen was neo mint, which is a pastel green. This year was about lilac, which is like a lavender baby purple. And um, I think these colors and these color tones are gonna continue for twenty twenty one, and lots of neutrals and whites because people are just trying to find inner peace right now, and these neutral colors are kind of soothing to wear. Your favorite designer. My favorite designer in India is Amit Agarwal. Like I love his work. I love how innovative he is with uh, the things he's doing. And then I also love the work of um, so I N I D produces Gen Next at Lakme Fashion Week every every year. And this year Gen Next happened on Sustainable Fashion Day. So we launched three new designers who were doing. sustainable work and they were doing lots of cottons and silks and um the loom art was really good i really uh, like their collection and there's a brand called miche that was part of genex they had a really good uh, collection as well your style inspiration my style inspiration so uh initially it was audrey hepburn and i have a whole wall of audrey hepburn behind me Uh, I love Audrey Hepburn's classic looks, but then they became too monotonous for me, like too classic, too basic. Uh, right now, um, I think my style inspiration has definitely come out of shows like uh, Younger, which is uh, produced. Uh, the same stylist who styled Sex and the City has styled Younger as well. So, and and she's the stylist who styled Emily in Paris, which was a big thing <laughs> right now. So um I love I have that's my sensibility like chic stylish pieces that are classic but then I can upgrade them with any kind of trend any time What are the three must haves in your wardrobe Three must haves a good trench coat like I'm a sucker for trench coats um uh, a, a good pair of sneakers because again I don't wear heels anymore like I've given up wearing heels I wear sneakers everywhere like I I I just attended a wedding recently and underneath my leg I was wearing sneakers because I wanted to be comfortable so a good pair of sneakers a good trench coat and um a good everyday bag very important I'm wearing sneakers right now so yes <laughs> yes that <laughs> so like I'm all the Yeah, I mean uh, that was my own present to myself, but uh, they're comfy and they're stylish. You keep yes, them good, and even so stylish. Brand into that, so yeah, comfort. Yeah. Uh, right. What celebrity you would love to style on the ramp? On the ramp? Oh God, I don't know. Like I feel so. This is a very typical answer because, but the thing is, I don't. see a lot of people in bollywood wanting to experiment as much as sonam kapoor experiments like she can carry off anything and look great you know and uh, i i think that that is sort of that drive to try new things is missing in a lot of other actresses in bollywood so probably sonam kapoor because you can make her wear crazy clothes and she will still like look great in them your expression when you see someone really wearing something very wrong on the red carpet So like I would just look at my mom and like roll my eyes, but secretly. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, thank you. I think you really shared everything from your heart and from your style, of course. Thank and you. We're very very happy to have that info. I would love to carry on so many more questions coming, but I think we really ran out of time here a long yeah. time back. We're just continuing. Yeah. Maybe we should now. But and if you guys are so fun chatting with you. <laughs> Sorry. I I, I, I just said it's been great chatting with you. I loved all the questions and just answering and knowing how interested people are, you know, in clothes and style and trends. I'm amazed as well. It's a, yeah. it's a it's a it's a fabulous fabulous candid chat style that we've had here. We could just talk about this all day, in fact, yeah. and just have a cup of coffee and carry on. It's that kind Keep of really early chat we've had. Yes. <laughs> so, thank you very much for your time today and thank all you your so tips. Much.
Thanks. And thank you, people, for watching this. Uh, as always, this is the BLCC Femina Miss India 2020, co-powered by Sephora and Raposo. And today's chat was all about style and trends and how you can make them your own. So uh, Tisha Kosla, our uh, style mentor from INIFD, has told so much on uh, styling. I will try and save this chat. So if you've just joined us, you know where to go. There's plenty there. And you can, of course, get in touch with her as well. Can't they, Tisha? And how should they do that? Um, yeah, you can get in touch with me. I'm on Instagram at Tisha Costa. So you can send any questions you have. I'd love to answer them. Yes, you're getting one request from me right away because you should always be following stylists, I think. You will get your trends from there, people. So, <laughs> so let's do that. Thank you very much for your time, Tisha. Totally love this session. Same here. I loved it. Thank you. And thank you to everyone watching us right now. Yeah. Love that you join in each time we have an expert opinion. Thank you for your time. And I always say this, but today this means real something. People, keep it stylish. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye-bye then. Bye. See you soon.